We have a very special guest on our hotline, UFC 173's lightweight Vince Pichel. He's taking on Anthony Njuquani on May 24th. Again, that's here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Vince, hey, how are you doing today? Hey, good. How you doing, Heidi? Excellent, man. Now, um, I do have to start this off on, on a sad note because I did take a look at your Twitter yesterday and I realized you were also a fan of The Ultimate Warrior. We were paying homage to him a little bit earlier on in the show. Uh, man, I mean, how tragic is this? Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. It's unbelievable. And you know what's weird is uh, I was actually talking to one of my friends, Jason, about it like two days before. And then, uh, you know, he's like, didn't Ultimate Warrior die? I was like, no way, man. That dude will never die. And then, you know, the induct- the induction happens. And then, you know, I read about it yesterday. So I'll- I called him and text my friend Jason. I'm like, dude, you killed him, man. You jinxed him. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy sad. And to think that, you know, and it just goes to show you in life that you really got to take every moment for what it's worth. I mean, the guy was was on Monday Night Raw on Monday night, basically came out as the Ultimate Warrior, did his whole gimmick, and in a very eerie thing basically gave his own eulogy right beforehand it was very very sad yeah and i was uh, i didn't get to watch it but i was reading about how they thought it was going to be like this big giant um entrance for him but they kind of came out and just 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 let him walk out on normal it really wasn't too big showy or anything like that but um yeah it's it's crazy i mean you really do have to cherish every moment of life because you never know when your number is going to be up and and you know perfect example right there i mean you could be on top of the world one second and the next second you know you're gone so you really do have to cherish every moment well you've had a a lot of moments here in your career you started out uh, as far as we have been able to see you on the ultimate fighter the live season that went down that was the ultimate fighter 15 you made it all the way to the semifinals, and now you're competing in the ufc's big stage i mean how have these experiences really led you up to where you are today and the path that you want to get on um, honestly, it's, it's been a super crazy road. Uh, when I started fighting, you know, I always said, I'm going to be in the UFC, I'm going to do the UFC. And, you know, for the most part, you, I really believed it. But then back in my head, I'm like, it's, there's so many people that are, you know, ahead of me in line and so much better than me skill wise and have so much more experience. Like, am I ever really going to make it? And, you know, I made it and it's, it's just amazing. And, um, since the show, um, I just been, you know, trying to strive and into it. I can to try to, um, get myself out there and, and, prove uh, to myself and to everyone else that, you know, there's a reason why I'm fighting and the reason why I'm in the UFC. You know, uh, you say that and I think about, you know, you, let's see, I think you took a year off uh, from after the Kavila fight uh, up until taking your last fight against Garrett Whiteley. Um, is, you know, stepping away like that, did it affect you at all being away from the promotion for over a year? No, not at all, actually. Um, if anything, to me, it kind of drove me to, to work that much harder because that, that layoff that I had was a basically involuntary layoff. Um, that wasn't my choice. It was, you know, my surgery, recovering. Um, I wanted to make sure when I was back, I was, you know, 110% and I was able to compete at the, at the level the UFC has because it's the UFC, man. You can't go in there. You know, you're not fighting slouches, so you got to be on top of your game or you could really get hurt. You know, it's, it's no joke. It's, it's real life fighting. And what was the injury? I'm just curious. Um, I injured my shoulder. Uh, I had a torn labrum, mm-hmm. uh, my rotator cuff, and my bicep was basically split in half. And I'd have some reconstructive surgery done my bicep and um, have it basically uh, cut from my labrum and, and reattached to my uh, to my um, bone in my in my arm. I'm not really sure. Then I can't remember the name. I don't know if it's. I can't remember the name of the bone, but basically connected to my to my arm bone. So if the doctor had to drill holes and loop it through my bone and have it like basically uh, healed to the bone instead of to the ligaments where uh, where it normally comes to um, what you're born with. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, what kind of rehab goes with that type of surgery? And I mean, when that happened, did you even think you'd be able to fight again? Yeah. Honestly, um, when, when it first happened and, and I first got done with surgery. I, I felt super hopeless. Like at, at night, you know, I just I wanted to just cry sometimes because I didn't really think that I'd be able to come back. Um, but you know, as the weeks went by and, and as I started doing the physical therapy and pushing through, you know, you kind of give yourself a little bit of hope here and there, and, and start realizing like, you know, it sucks and and and, and it's really tough, but I, I can come back from this. I can come back from this, and that's basically just what drove me, just my own motivation to tell me I'm coming back and. 
you know, I have a good support system. I got my uh, my girlfriend or my fiance now, Kelly. Uh, she helps me a lot. I have friends, you know, family that that kind of you know pick you up when you're down, and and you know that was a big factor in me coming back and 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 coming back as strong as I did. Well, first off, congratulations on the healing, and congratulations on having a fiance. Good for you, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a big step for me. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I come from like a super poor family, and, and no one in my family really got married, so I didn't really think that that would happen in my life. But you know, it's happening, and, and I'm excited. I'm happy for it. Well, well, take us back. I mean, you, you say you come from a poor family. I mean, w- what got you to where you are today? Obviously, you know, you're you're a successful fighter, fighting for the world's largest promotion, but you come from a bad background. Explain. Um, yeah, I grew up in Canoga Park when I was a kid, and you know, just super poor. I just lived with my mom. Uh, I got. You know, there's five kids in my family. I have uh, two older sisters, a younger brother, and a younger sister. So um, I had a pretty big family, just me and my mom, you know, and, and my, my brothers and sisters. And, you know, we, we, we didn't really have much growing up. I mean, um, my toys were my friend's toys. You know, if, if I never really had a bicycle or anything like that, it was always my friend's stuff. And, and you know, I would just borrow their stuff, and that would be my toys. And, you know, at the time, I'm like, I'm a kid, so everything's happy-go-lucky. And, and now that I realize it, I'm like, wow, like, a lot of people, I guess, like tell me that my childhood, the way it was, was was a little rough. But you know, I was happy. I was a kid. I, you know, I had what I took, what I had, and and I was I was just a happy-go-lucky person. But um, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I didn't ever really expect it to to kind of get too far in life and and just kind of work my way through, just you know, inch and inch by inch. But you know, now now look what I've accomplished with just a little bit of determination. And and honestly, I think the thing that drives me the most is just kind of hate, you know, like a lot of people saying, oh, that's not possible, or you can't do that, or, or me even thinking to myself, like, like that's like something that I shouldn't be doing, but, you know, screw it, I'm going to do it anyway. I had and, read uh, something to the effect that Mark the Bearsmith, who twice fought Dan Severin, uh, was somebody who got you involved with wanting to do MMA. Yes, actually, um, he did. Uh, uh, my, uh, I was dating this girl at the time when I was younger, and her dad was actually best friends with Mark Smith, and they're both pretty big dudes. And you know, back then, I think I was like, uh, geez, how old was I? I think I was like 23 or 23 to 25. Um, you know, we, we'd be hanging out holidays, and, and Mark and her dad, uh, Mike, they were they were big dudes, so they used to pick on me because when I was younger, I used to go, I used to get in a lot of fights. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would go out on weekends, you know, I'd hang out with my brother, my friends, and we'd have a party. Someone say something, bam, it's fight time. You know, I just start fighting. Um, but he, him, they used to pick on me, sit on me in holidays and stuff. So I'm like, one day, fat boy, I'm gonna get bigger and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess you up, you know. And uh, he challenged me. He's like, well, yeah, you think you're tough? You'll back our brawler. Like, just go to this gym. You know, I got this buddy that was this gym, going to the gym, fight some real fighters, see how tough you are. And I went, and man, look where I am now. I've been doing it ever since. Um, you know, it was was uh, really hard for me though. Was as Mark the Bear Smith died a few years ago, right, 2010. And I, I, yeah, I, I never really got a chance to uh, to thank him for for basically setting me on my path and, and getting my foot in the door. Um, but uh, what happened was uh, I worked for AAA, so you know I do roadside calls uh, basically every day. I, I'm still doing that job. And one day I got this call, and and the lady that I went out to was actually his mother. So it was actually really cool. I never met his mom before, and I, I got to talking with her, and I was honestly talking to her for like two or three hours, and I got to I got to thank her for, you know, Mark basically getting my foot in the door and, and doing what he did and helping me with my career. And, you know, it felt good. I kind of got that that uh, that weight off my shoulder talking to her about it, and she's a super sweet lady, and, and um, you know, I'm really sad for a loss with Mark, and she was telling me the story and stuff, and, and Mark was a really cool dude, you know, you know, big-hearted guy and, and just, you know, lovable by everyone, and and it was really unfortunate what happened, but you know, another example of, of just cherished life because how precious it is. Yeah, it it really is, and you know, I I gotta say, I'm, I'm it's very nice to hear that story, and it's really cool that you got to m- meet his mom. But the one thing I'm taking from this too is, you still have a a job. I mean, you have a a nine to five job while being a UFC fighter. How do you fit in the time to get the training? Honestly, um, I you want something bad enough, you make it work, and. You know what? I wish my job was ninety-five. My job is more like a, a seven-to-seven job, and wow. you know, Oof. I work twelve hours a day, and then afterwards I train, or before I train, and you know, it, it's it's tough, but I make it work, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is is yeah, I'm in the UFC, and you know, I'm I'm in the higher echelon fighting and stuff, but I still have a regular life that I have to do. You know, I got bills, and bills got to be paid, and you know, and 
unfortunately, like I'm not at the level in the UFC where where I could just quit that quit that job and fight and you know be okay. So you know I have a job too, and you know you got to do what you got to do in this life. And if you want things, you got to be willing to suffer for it. That's what I'm doing. Well, you, you definitely are, and you're doing a, a, a heck of a job at it. I mean, you know, being in the UFC. Uh, at eight and one, you won your last fight after a year off from shoulder surgery. Uh, it was a great fight. You really controlled Whiteley better than uh, I guess I, I, many people expected. You he really good fighter, both of you really good, but you dominated him for all three rounds of the fight. You know, was it hard getting back in there? At, you know, after being so away for so long, was there any ring rust involved? Um, no, not really ring rust, I wouldn't say, but, um, uh, this time I actually had my nerves coming back. Um, usually when I fight, I mean, like I said, I've been, I've been in countless street fights. I've been, you know, at least I'm going to say over a hundred street fights. So like me fighting isn't really like a big deal. It's like, okay, it's a fight. I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm ready to go. I don't really overstress about it because that's when things go wrong. I just kind of go in there and go with the flow. I'm one of those kind of guys, but, um, you know, when when I when I was fighting him and and I came back, I just I I had such nerves that when I walk out, usually I'm okay, I'm smooth and relaxed, I feel good. But this time, like my arms felt heavy, my legs felt heavy. You know, I just I got that adrenaline dump before I started walking out. And, you know, I'm back there just trying to shadow box and get my arms to to lighten up on me. But you know, once it comes fight time and that that door shuts, I mean, I kind of just blank out and and let let the let the skill go through. It was a very funny moment, I remember, during that fight. I think you were setting up, um, it might have been a Darce choke, and the ref, <laughs> the ref asked Garrett how he was doing, and, and you, you went, he, said, I'm, he said, I'm fine, and you went, not for long. Did that really happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that did happen. Um, so many people laugh about that still. They go, man, I can't believe you said it. Like, that's great. And when, when I was actually doing that, um, I remember having the Darce and, and you know, like any sub, when you have it, you know you have it. So um, I had that sucker tight, and, and um, you know, it was my fault. I made a rookie mistake and, and not going in my hip and, and kind of walking into him. But when I heard the, the person ask if he's okay, I didn't think it was the ref. I thought it was his corner <laughs> where I was. So I thought it was his coach. So I kind of was like trash talking to the coach as I'm trying to choke this kid out. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that did happen. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Tell me, how did you get the nickname from hell? Because that nickname, it, it's uh, it's pretty threatening. It's pretty, you know, I like it. It's a good fighter uh, nickname, from hell. Yeah, you know what? It, it, it fits me really well. Um, it's it's basically my, my alter ego. Uh, you know, for the most part, if you ask anyone, I'm just a, you know, super, super uh, happy-go-lucky kind of person. I laugh a lot. I joke around a lot, you know. Um, I, I just like to have a good time. I don't really stress on, on the bad things. I just, I just try to, try to keep everything positive, have a good time. But, you know, when, when, uh, when that flip switch or when you get on my bad side, um, that's when you meet that person. And, and, and like I said, I could be the most happiest, coolest person in the world. But what, once, you know, once you get on my bad side and you make me angry and, and, um, I'm basically like put you on my, on my S list. Um, that's it, man. You see that person and, and nothing good. Well, talk about your fight here with Anthony Njuquani. Uh He's also a very well-noted striker. He's been uh, in the UFC for quite a while. Well, what are you looking at as your advantages in this fight? Um, I think my advantage is definitely going to be uh, my strength, um, ground for sure. Um, he is. He's a good striker. He's a good technical striker. Um, what, what, I, what I see in this match is basically it's going to be um, a technician versus uh, versus strength. So it's going to be skill versus strength because I know, you know, he's six foot tall. Um, I'm sure he's, he's going to have, uh, a good reach on me. He's going to try to pick me apart, keep me on the outside, which is, which is his game. But, uh, you know, my game is, is getting in your face and, and bullying you and, and using my strength and kind of wearing you out. So it's going to be a good fight. I'm um, looking forward to it. This is a big fight for me. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like taking my step forward in the career and, and, that's what you do. I mean, you don't get in the UFC to just stay stay low, man. You you climb that ladder. And you try to get as high as you can. And you try to be champ, and that's what I want. So, you know, he he's basically a stepping stone for me, and and I'm going to use that stepping stone. Well, we will look forward to your fight again. Uh, that is Vince Pichel versus Anthony and Jaquani UFC Fight Pass. I believe that the the fight will be aired on. So make sure to get that. It's nine ninety nine a month. UFC TV. 
to be able to see all the prelims for these pay-per-view cards, and uh, that will be a part of UFC 173. But uh, Vince, we'd love to thank you for the time. We really appreciate uh, the interview, and there's some real eye-opening stuff there, man, from you, and we appreciate uh, you spending the time with us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, you know, it's, it's, I always love doing these things. Uh, gives me practice at interviews, so I don't say things I'm not supposed to be saying. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed then, you said S, so you did a good job there with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got my PR girl Amanda kind of like texting me uh, last night, like you, you know, you can't say this, you can't say that, you gotta be careful, like you know. Uh, you be, did be you, but just be careful what you say. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> it's funny. It's all right. We got we got our, our our main man Brian right there. He's ready with the dump button just in case. But we're <laughs> glad you didn't have to hit it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. You do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, Vince, we do have to head out to a break here, but thank you so much for your time. Again, Vince from Help and Shell, he'll be fighting Anthony Injuquani at UFC 173. That comes up uh, just at May 24th at MGM here in town as part of UFC 173.